Hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy, and today I am treating myself. It's the 1987 Gordon McPhail Carnesier's Choice Mortlock, bottled at 31 years old, cash strength, 54% ABV, only 200 bottles ever produced. It's a refill Sherry's Hogshead. I'll let you know why I'm not storing it in this box when I nose it, taste it, and give it a mark. My good friend and I, Rob from Whiskey in the Six, we acquired a couple of these bottles. We each took one and we split one. Uh, that's actually what I'm drinking right now. This is what I have left of our bottle split. Just a couple more ounces. Um, we cracked this on his live show. I'll link to it here. This is all I got left of this. And then I just brought this out just to show, look at the color. The color on this whiskey is super, super dark. Now this is a refill Sherry Hogshead. You don't get this kind of color from a refill cask. And I was reading a review. Um, we kind of did some research into this one before we got it and we kind of jumped at it when it came out. But the person reviewing this was like, if this was a refill cask, how long did they mature the first whiskey for? Like a couple months? I mean, crazy, crazy color in this. Yes, it is 31 years old at cask strength, but that is dark. I don't know if the camera is gonna do it justice. That is a dark whiskey. Um, so here's what I have left of the bottle split. I made up my own little label for it. Um, so let's get into it. I'm using my Macallan Lalique crystal glass, absolutely beautiful glass for a beautiful whiskey. Let's see how this is on the nose. <laughs> just right away, it's just it's thick, beautiful, dark sherry notes. Look at these like awesome sherry tannins. It's just so gorgeous. I mean, the first time I put a nose to this, I was just taken back because like, this is the profile that I like a lot. There's chocolate in here. Chocolate covered strawberries. There's like, chocolate like little wafer sticks sometimes you see them around the holidays here's what they look like i love that love those things i used to eat those by the freaking tin load when i was a kid you get coffee here and here like coffee bean you get red berries you get like orange peel uh like orange oil like orange peel oil there's some oakiness in this I would say it's like a like a charred kind of like oak. You kind of get almost like a smoke level to it. Not peat whatsoever, but like that charred kind of smokiness to the oak. I mean, this is a whiskey you can just sit down with and just nose it for an hour and be com completely content. It's just my profile. It's the one kind of like shared whiskey that I've had before that I'm like, it just, crosses all the boxes on the nose for me. It's just enveloping. It's uh, it just hits you and but it's like luxurious and complex. And you can keep going back to the glass and keep picking out more things. It's just really, really good. <laughs> uh, let's go palette. heavy, heavy raspberry note here. It's like that, that raspberry uh, drizzle they really put on like a dessert at a restaurant, just like that. Um, more chocolate, more espresso beans. You get like a really awesome cheesecake note to it too. There's vanilla in there. The finish, nice, long, those raspberries, some more dark fruits, maybe some strawberries come back. That chocolate, vanilla, it just lingers, oakiness. It's ever so drying. It slowly, slowly, slowly dries out your palate. I'd say maybe it takes, you know, a good 60 seconds from the start of it to the finish, just slowly drying that whole time and then just releasing flavors as it does it. Really awesome whiskey. Um, it's really something special, I think. Um, Really excited to have this whiskey, have a backup bottle even as well. Um, Rob and I kind of, we spend a lot of money on these um, and I'll get into that when I score it for value, but I'm so happy we did because this profile is my style of whiskey for sure. Um, score wise for me on this one, I don't know. It's hard to score a whiskey like this just because it's, 
it's something that like it's one of the best I've ever had and I'm trying to decide is it the best whiskey I've ever had and then I'm trying to decide is it the best sherry whiskey I've ever had and I think I can answer that to be yes for sure it is the best sherry forward whiskey that I've ever had without a doubt um, now this one's interesting because like I said it's a refill sherry hogshead um, super super dark it doesn't taste like a refill at all obviously Gordon McPhail had this cask and I mentioned this in my other reviews about a refill cask potentially being better than a first fill cask just because they know what this cask was capable of when they filled it the first time and that whiskey they got from it was obviously really really nice and they knew let's put in some decent spirit let's age this for a long time and we're going to get a good result like I said 200 bear uh, 200 bottles only from this so you could tell the evaporation after 31 years um, and one interesting thing about this, it says right on the label here, uh, carefully matured in our own casks with spirit entrusted from Mortlock Distillery. So that's kind of interesting, and that's kind of a question about independent bottlings. Are we getting a cask from the distillery, or are we getting a cask provided by the independent bottler? I think a lot of times it is a cask provided from the independent bottler and not a cask from the distillery. It's the distillery spirit, but the cask was sourced elsewhere from Gordon McPhail in this case. Um, that's the thing about those Macallan uh, spay malts that, yeah, he's like, oh, I'm Macallan 18 year old, Macallan spay malt 18, yeah, but you're not getting the Macallan cask, right? That's what Macallan is, is, it's those awesome sherry casks that they get. It's like, yeah, you're getting Macallan spirit, but it's being aged in a different cask. So when someone sees, oh, Macallan 18 year old for you know a quarter of the price or whatever it may be, you're not really getting that Macallan essence. And that's an interesting thing about independent bottles um, that you kind of got to be aware of, I think. In this case, obviously this refill cast, Gordon McPhail knew what they were doing with this one. Um, so really interesting. Uh, let's get into scoring. Like I said before, scoring this was kind of difficult for me because I wanted to give it a high score. I'm not sure how high to go. It definitely is the best sherry whiskey I've ever had. Um, it just fits my profile so well, but how high do I go up? I mean, you got to eventually think that, you know, you like to think that you're going to try some epic, epic whiskeys and you got to save some room on the top end for those. Um, but I mean, for this one, it's just such a nice whiskey. I'm going to go 94 out of 100. Highest mark I've given on the channel. Um, definitely the best sherry whiskey I've ever had. It's really competing with an old Brora that I tried one time and an old Ardbeg from the 70s, both from 1974 actually. Um, it's really competing with those two whiskeys for being kind of the best I've ever had, but those profiles are just, they're a lot different than what this one is. Um, this is just a sherried whiskey in your face. It kind of reminds me, okay, this is kind of what I thought about it just initially before. It's like, take the best Macallan 18. Like, I've had the ones from, like, 1995, but take one even from before that. From when all these guys were saying, that like, you know, the 80 Macallans were really good. You know, the, the early 90 ones. Take that. Take the Macallan house style out of it. Like, those Macallan tannins. Like, that kind of Macallan kind of sulfur. That kind of house style that runs through at Macallan. Take that out. Bottle that at, like, 50% ABV. And you have a, kind of what you're getting here, I think. That's kind of, like, where I kind of would describe it in terms of someone who's maybe had a Macallan like that before. Like Macallan 18, without the house style, higher ABV, because I love that Macallan sherry. It's so, so good. It's like those flavors just burst kind of off your tongue, and that's what I'm getting out of this one. So 94 out of 100, really awesome score, really awesome whiskey. Now for value, we paid uh, 875 Canadian dollars for this. Now that's a stupid amount of money to spend on a bottle of alcohol, of course. But when it's your passion, when you're excited about it, if you break it down, you're getting a 31-year-old whiskey at cash strength. How many other 31-year-olds at cash strength are coming in at under a thousand Canadian dollars? Really, really few, I think, if any. Um, to my American friends, that's about uh, 650 US dollars. It's about 875 Canadian, give or take, at the time of recording. Um, and I've seen these things go in auction now for, you know, uh, 900 pounds. So value is hard for me, again, to score in this one, because 
value-wise, this seems like a great deal. It seems like a great deal for, uh, you know, almost 900 bucks Canadian for this whiskey. But if I'm scoring it completely blind, if I've just, someone's handed me this and I've tried it, I'm like, wow, that's an amazing sherry whiskey. How much would I pay for it? If they're gonna say it's gonna cost me about 900 bucks Canadian, I'm like, uh, I don't know. Cause I mean, I can go out and get, well, I was gonna say I can go out and get an old Macallan 18, but <laughs> those are actually probably the same price as this. <sighs> it's tough. It's tough for value for this one. I think if you give this to me blind, and I'm just like, put a value on this. I don't think I'd go as high as like almost 900 bucks. Therefore, I'm gonna take off one value point um, here, bring it down to 93. But then again, I mean, I could go back and forth on that because in 10 years time, I still have this bottle perhaps, you know, what I paid for, it's gonna seem like a great, great value in that time. So it's kind of depending me, depending on what kind of circumstance, how you look at it at each given time. But I think if you give it to me blind, I'm not going to say that I'm going to pay 900 bucks for this. Therefore, I'm taking off one part to make it 93. Um, I said before that I didn't store this in the box. And here's why. These boxes, it's a kind of a basic box, whatever. There is a wood finish, like a var wood varnish smell to this box. And it still has it. And I've had this bottle for a while. Now, I also had this issue with the Highland Park 30-year-old. Highland Park 30 year old, I got this bottle, I ended up actually getting rid of it before opening it. But this box, this is a huge, huge pungent smell of wood varnish and it's, it's freaking terrible. Now I reached out to Highland Park and they actually sent me a new box, brand new box. Didn't quite smell as much as this one, but I watched a Ralphie video and he said that boxes like this can affect the whiskey. And I believe him because these seals are not airtight. They're not airtight because evaporation will eventually bring this neck level down if you let this go for, you know, however many years. So these are not airtight. They could potentially pick up some of the aroma, some of the chemicalness in these boxes. And I think it's a big disservice putting out a whiskey, especially this one from Highland Park, a 30 year old whiskey with a box that just reeks of wood varnish. So that's why I don't store it in here. Um, that's the end of the review. Really awesome whiskey. I'm going to take my time with this one tonight. Enjoy myself. Um, let me know what you think. Mortlock, Gordon McPhail, uh, value for these things. Have you tried this one before? I know there's not too many bottles out there, but it's, it's a great, great whiskey. Um, thanks for watching. Really, really appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, if you like what you see on the channel, you can check out my Patreon. A dollar a month kind of helps to support, um, you know, the ridiculousness that is Scotch whiskey. Thanks for uh, watching. Cheers.